In today's episode of the Pathfinder Presents podcast, I got a very interesting guest here with me today. Today I'm with Raquel Carraro, and she's hailing over from the folks over at Mintago. And Mintago is a very interesting player um, that, you know, basically works in the financial health and cost of living uh, space. And uh, it's basically an inclusive financial well-being solution, right? And we want to really deep dive into, you know, who is using it, um, how they're using it, and also how it helps uh, users to, yeah, basically strap towards uh, financial health. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Of course. So yeah, maybe give us a quick insight um, from your perspective, right? Um, at uh, Mintago, like what is Mintago all about? Um, yeah. Uh, how do people use it? Uh, what's the pains that they solve with it? Maybe give us an insight. Sure. So Mintago is a financial well-being platform. Uh, we help business adapt and support their employees uh, in these changing economic climate. climate. Um, we help employees find lost pension pots. Uh, we provide them with financial planning tools. Um, we help them plan their retirement. We give them access to free financial advisors, and we have over a thousand pieces of educational content. Um, and we also help businesses and both businesses and employees save money um, with via the UK government salary sacrifice uh, pension scheme, and we support them uh, with its implementation. Um, as we know, you know, the best place uh, to learn about financial well-being should be schools, uh, but the second uh, best place is the workplace. Um, so I think that we've done such a good job as a society in building awareness around mental health, and now it's a time to kind of break the stigma around money. Very good. Now, um... Tell us a little bit more about the users. Like, are these like you know private end users? Do they use it through like their employers? Like, how uh, how can people get access to Mintago? Yes, yeah, so uh, we are a B two B two C business. So users at the moment can only access Mintago through their employer as a benefit. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be the employer that decides to take Mintago as a benefit and give it to the rest of the company. Makes sense. And who within those organizations would be the one that brings um, Mintego to the to the table? Like, is there like a champion internally that says, you know, we need something like that in our organizations? Like, how does that look typically look like? Yeah. So um, this past year, we did um, kind of play around with our messaging, um, but definitely it's decision makers that would be the internal uh, champions. Uh, playing around with our messaging meant that uh, initially we were. Uh, kind of um, leading with the um, salary sacrifice pension part, which obviously aligned more with CFOs. Um, but now obviously leading with our financial well-being messaging, we get both CFOs and HR as internal champions. Very good. Um, now, how would you say do these folks actually learn about um, Tango? Like what is the, what is sort of the journey that they would be going through in order to even hear, right? I mean, of course, uh, those B2B buyers, they, um, you know, there's many different options they could take, right, for the financial health um, in terms of, um, you know, even like what approach even to take. Um, how, how do they learn about you guys and what's their journey looking like? And maybe, or in other words, what are the client acquisition channels you guys leverage? Yeah, so uh, for us, it's twofold. Um, we do both outbound and inbound. Outbound meaning, you know, uh, reaching out to our ICP via emails or uh, LinkedIn. And inbound, we do uh, organic social, um, we do SEO. And LinkedIn, in terms of social, is really working well for us, obviously, for the B2B uh, market. Uh, we do try to have a variety of marketing touch points. And uh, obviously, content marketing uh, is big from our website. Um, and we did see actually a lot of interest from PR and awards and guest appearances. Um, obviously, awards specifically, if we get nominated for a financial well-being platform award, uh, that's great um, awareness for us. And we did get some great um, leads from that as well. Very good. Now, um, maybe tell me uh, a, a little bit more uh, about sort of, you know, how you are thinking about the website and the journey, right? I mean, a lot of marketers we have in the show, there's, you know, a lot of thinking goes into the messaging, uh, the user flow, like, how do you personally think about the page? Yes. Um, so the website is obviously our storefront. So when I first joined Mintigo, I was really adamant about, um, you know, kind of rebranding our whole website to convey a friendlier, more professional brand image. Um, I didn't think that the website that we had at the time um, 
did convey that. Um, so actually, after we kind of rebranded the, the website, it resulted in higher leads and better quality leads, um, just because people saw that um, it was more professional, they felt like they could trust us more. Um, and obviously, it was um, the website did help us uh, build that trust with mm -hmm. potential prospects. Um, and we do use the website as, as I said, as a storefront, but also as the place where um, potential prospects can uh, read more and learn more about not just Mintigo and its features, uh, but also uh, we want to add value, right? So we want them to, um, we want to kind of um, respond and answer to um, their doubts when they're looking for a financial well-being platform. We want to teach them what salary sacrifice is if they don't know what it is. We want to teach them why um, financial well-being is a good investment for the business's bottom line and not so and not only for their employees. Um, so all of this is is kind of like our storefront and um, kind of conveying what Mintigo is before they even decide to come to us and book a demo and get in touch. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, so um, now what's quite interesting is actually when we speak about the website typically, right, there's always marketers, they sort of, there's some strength that a page has, then there's some room for improvement typically. Like, how do you, how do you think about that? Like what, what would you say is a major strength of the page as it is today versus where do you personally even see room for further improvement? Um, as a major strength, I would say, obviously, there is, um, you know, the website is an ongoing process, so there is always room for improvement. Um, but as a major strength, I think we do have um, most of the material and information on our website. Our branding uh, is quite strong and um, there is really, you know, anything that you need. We have a live chat, which is really important to us. And if a prospect needs to get in touch and wants to learn more before booking a demo, they can literally just... Uh, go on the website and chat live uh, with us uh, for any question. Um, so I think that's a great strength. Um, surely there are some areas that would, we would like to focus on more. Um, for example, some industry related and company size approach, um, because obviously uh, we get um, companies from all um, sizes and all industries. Uh, we're not just one specific um, type of industry or vertical that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So um, what we're right now thinking about adding is obviously case studies so that, you know, other businesses thinking about getting Mintigo can be like, hey, here's what, you know, here's how this company has used Mintigo. These are the results that they got. Um, and obviously then they can even understand if uh, Mintigo suits them and their company. That makes sense. Um, now, what's quite interesting uh, is I think, um, you know, we've actually talked about, you know, booking a demo um, and, you know, of course, a lot of marketers work on driving conversions on the page, right? That have traffic to drive conversions for demos and the likes. Now, what have you learned over the years? Can be with Mintago, can be with other companies in the past when it comes to actually driving conversions? What was sort of maybe some methodology, some technologies that were helpful in, in getting those results? Um, I would say that there's really a lot that I've learned. Um, first of all, is scrap all of that you know about your company when you're um, driving, trying to drive the conversion in terms of user experience. Um, everything that you know, uh, you, you do not have to assume that uh, your prospects would see your website the, the way that you view it because you've been in the company and you know every single part of the product, every single part of the service. So really put yourself in the shoes of someone that sees it from for the first time and sees it with a fresh perspective, right? So that's um, mainly the first thing. Um, another thing that I've learned is also, um, you know, people need to be spoon fed most of the time. You need to tell them what action you want them to take next. Do not assume that if you write uh, an article and then you uh, you don't put a call to action that they will then think about booking a demo or signing up to your newsletter, right? Um, so obviously that's um, something important in, in the conversion side and talking about CTA, you need CTAs that are seen, um, your website needs to be a user-friendly, um, the user experience need to, needs to be seamless so that they, they don't get lost in the thousands of pages of your website, um, as well as people have a very low attention span um, so anything that needs to be said or then you need them to pay attention to should be in that first uh, above the fold section, right? Um, 
but in terms of tools, obviously there are a plethora of tools uh, that, that you can use. Um, Hotjar is one of them that it's great. It tells you uh, where on the website your, you know, the users are more likely to click or have clicked the most. Um, so those are like some tools and there are many, many others. Very cool. Um, we spoke a bit about what you guys are doing. We spoke about who you guys are serving, spoke about the web a bit. Now, I would love to learn a little bit more about your personal journey as a marketer, right? And um, there is so much content out there um, for marketers, you know, um, you could all day long read and learn about, you know, your marketing techniques. Like, where do you personally like to go? Like, where do you find high quality information with all the noise out there? Yeah, so that's an interesting question because um, I like to learn from experts. So what I tend to do is I do my research on whichever whichever area I want to improve. Mm -hmm. So whether that be podcasting, content marketing, Facebook ads, um, I tend to do my research and I find the person that is seen as the expert in that specific area, right? So maybe people who have built six, seven, eight, nine figure businesses on that specific marketing skill. And I either follow them, you know, follow their videos, or sometimes I purchase their courses if I feel like they're interesting enough. And uh, besides that, obviously, I do a lot of research as well um, with other brands, not just in in the space that I'm that I'm in, but also other brands that are maybe on the B two B side, um, but are doing some really great marketing. And it's uh, a lot of inspiration. You can learn a lot from that as well. Very cool. Raquel, I got some rapid fire questions as we're slowly going towards the end of the interview. Um, are you ready for those? Yes. <laughs> what is the last book that you read? Last book is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Mm -hmm. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? Growth. So not just on a revenue side, but um, especially on the product development side, building the best financial platform out there. If there would be no boundaries in tech, what's the one thing, if you would have a magic wand, what's the one single thing that you would fix for your role as a marketer? If there were no boundaries in tech. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a good one. I think that if there if there were no boundaries in tech, I would probably clone experts to help me out in, in my day-to-day -day, uh, role. Um, so give them the areas that I want them to focus on, just clone them and, and leave it to them. Mm -hmm. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? Um, not much. I think more the vision that I have for the company. There are so many things that I want to do and implement that um, I think many times I find myself not sleeping because I'm thinking of the most efficient way to do it. And, you know, just a way to kind of like, multiply my output in the least amount of time and in the best way. So I would say that. Very good. And the very last question would be, right? If you could give yourself one advice, but if you travel back your first day joining at Mintago, what is the one single advice that you would give yourself? If I have to say one single advice, I would say get a mentor. I think that's what I missed when I first started out. And it can be really, really useful in jumpstarting your career. Um, especially, you it doesn't have to be someone that has 20 or 25 years of experience. You just need someone that can help you get to the next level. So it's um, I think it, that that would be the advice that I would give myself. Any advice for marketers out there that are looking for mentors? Because maybe for some people, it's not that easy or they don't know how to get a hold on or a, a hand on on that. Like, what would you advise them? Yes, uh, look for communities. So there, are, if you just go uh, do a quick Google search, there are many, many communities out there. Um, there are tech communities, you know, based on sectors, there are probably marketing communities as well. Um, there are very many different communities that you can look for. And most of the time you'll be able to find a mentor, even if it's just a peer that is uh, somehow uh, a bit more experienced than you uh, and can act as a mentor for you, uh, That's that will be very valuable. Very cool. Um, Raquel, I really appreciate you took the time with us today to be a guest on Path and Presents. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about Mintego, what is the one single thing that people should remember? Uh, Mintego is the UK's most complete, unbiased and inclusive financial well-being solution, um, we, helping businesses adapt and support their employees in these changing economic conditions and in any major financial milestone of their life. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Path and Presents. Sure. <laughs>